Good morning, and welcome to our next video lesson here from the Camargo Church of Christ. This is something new that we're doing while we're unable to meet together due to the coronavirus epidemic. And I really appreciate everyone who's watched our pre previous videos and who have left us messages. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Um, this morning, the topic of our lesson is going to be spiritual preparedness and preparedness I think is a timely it's a timely subject given what we're dealing with now as a nation and as a world and just think back a few weeks what if someone would have told you uh, before the epidemic really shut down everything that it was going to occur what would you have done to prepare yourself better uh, some folks might have grabbed some extra toilet paper because it went out of stock everywhere or picked up some more Lysol spray or some hand sanitizer. Or if you're like me, you probably would have went to hit the Chinese restaurant again uh, before it closed down. But the problem is with a lot of things in life is that they happen unexpectedly with little notice and we kind of get caught off guard. And that's why being prepared is so important. And I'm not just talking about having extra food or water at home or hoarding toilet paper, but I'm talking about being spiritually prepared because we don't know what God's timetable is. Only He knows. So we need to be prepared each and every day for whatever it is that God has planned. And there is a... Uh, Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, and this is talking about exercise and growing in spirit and in spiritual knowledge and wisdom, but I really think that you can extend this to being prepared and not really diminish any of the meaning. But Paul writes to Timothy there in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, he says, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And again, I think you could extend what Paul wrote to Timothy to being spiritually prepared. And you could say something like earthly preparedness is beneficial. It's nice to know that if an unexpected circumstance pops up that we can deal with it more easily. But spiritual preparedness is even more important because the ramifications of it is eternal. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that seemingly live their life like they're not aware that the last moment could be at any time. And I'm hoping if one thing can't, comes out of this pandemic and the way it sort of slowed down our world and slowed down the way that we live a little bit is that more people will consider, well, if something like a global epidemic of disease can pop up all at once, what about the return of the Lord? It could come suddenly without any notice, and it will come suddenly. So I hope people will be more interested and getting prepared for that. And this morning I want to look together at a couple couple of parables that really reinforce that idea that we need to be prepared each and every day because we don't know what God's timetable is, only He knows. And the first of those is the parable of the rich fool that you read about in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. And this is Jesus. He's telling this parable as a way to teach a lesson. And a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly lesson to be taught. And you can take a parable on its face and it's a story. But you can also dig a little bit deeper in it and find the hidden meaning of it. So we'll look at Luke chapter 12 verses 16 through 18. And it says, And he, being Jesus, told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, 
I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. What a problem to have. This gentleman, his, his field and his harvest have been so productive that he can't store all the bounty which he harvested. So he decides, I'm going to tear down my old barns and build bigger, nicer ones, and there I'm going to store this, this bounty that, that I've received. But the problem is this, this rich man, he never stops and thinks for a moment, who blessed me with this bounty? Who do I have to give thanks for this bounty? He's only thinking of himself and his money. So we'll pick up in uh, verse 19. So this fella, he's built his bigger barns. He's seemingly living on easy street. And then I will say to my soul, So you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. So this guy thinks he's got it made. He is living on easy street now. He's ready to kick back and enjoy his harvest and the bounty that's before him. But he's left God out of this equation. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. God is the author of every good blessing in our life, and he so abundantly delivers to us. I've said multiple times because it really, again, reinforced it to me, is that we're a blessed people even in the midst of the problems that are facing our nation and facing our world, we are so blessed and there are so many things that we should be giving thanks for. And in a way, we're kind of like the rich man. We've got it easy and we can tend to forget God and his goodness. The rich man forgot about God and forgot about how God blessed him with this prosperity. Mark chapter 8, verse 36 the Lord says something, and it's a passage of scripture that uh, most folks know. And the Lord asks, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What good is the riches of the world to you if you lose your eternal soul? The riches of the world are temporary. They're fleeting. But your eternal soul will live on and it can live on in hell or it can live on in heaven with God. So what would it profit you if you gained the whole world but lost your eternal destiny and your eternal home with God? And then again the Lord in Matthew chapter 6, or six verses 19 through 21 he also says Focus beyond the world and its riches and look to eternity. He says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the Lord's saying, everything in this world is temporary. It's perishing minute by minute that goes by. It's perishing. But instead, if you set your eyes on the prize and you look forward to heaven, and heaven is eternal. So laying up your treasure there, it, it doesn't perish. It doesn't rust. It doesn't decay. But instead... It's forever. So the rich man forgot about God, and he really, I mean, he took advantage of the, the bounty of his harvest, but he never thought.
thought a second about his soul and preparing for eternity. And the Lord tells another parable. It's called the parable of the ten virgins, and you can read about it in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. And this parable, probably more than others, really hits home the fact that the Lord's return could be at any moment, and we need to be prepared every moment like it's the last moment because his, his coming may catch a lot of people off guard, and you need to be ready. So Matthew 25, beginning with verse 1, the Lord says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegrooms. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamp. So some of them just grabbed their lamp and run out into the dark. And then the others took their lamp and extra oil with them because they're thinking we might be out here for a while. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom! Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. They are all out there waiting. The night's dragging on. They fall asleep. Then someone shouts, here comes the bridegroom. They all jump up and are lighting their lamps and getting ready to, bre to greet the bridegroom. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. They didn't have enough oil to last the night, and they're trimming their lamps, getting them ready, and there's just not enough oil. So the ones who are foolish turned to the ones who were wise and brought extra with them, said, please give us some. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. The ones that brought oil were ready. They met the bridegroom. They went into the marriage feast. They shut the door. The ones who were foolish, why, they had to run and buy more oil, which took time. And afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So you see these two groups of virgins. One took their lamp. They looked ahead and said, You know, we don't know how long we're going to be out here. Let's take some extra oil with us. They were prepared. The others, who were foolish, they just jumped up, grabbed their lamp with what oil was in it, and went out into the darkness. It's kind of like the person that goes camping and brings extra flashlight or extra batteries for their flashlight, rather than just the ones that are in it. They think ahead. They see that there could be an unexpected circumstance where they need those extra batteries. Being prepared is important because you never know at what instant the bridegroom will, will return. And if he comes into the marriage feast and you're off buying oil for your lamp, then unfortunately the time might be too late. And what the Lord's saying here is that you need to get prepared before I come because when I do arrive, it's going to be too late. It's too late at that point. The bridegroom returned and caught those foolish virgins unprepared. And... Paul writes to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. He says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And that's a metaphor the Lord himself used. You never know when a thief is going to break in, and you don't know when the Lord's going to return. So just like we prepare our homes, you might lock your doors at night and lock your windows, or you might install a security system. You need to likewise be prepared for the return of the Lord. 
For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. It seems like life is going to be going on just sort of like normal and all at once. Here comes the Lord, and it's too late to repair at that point. And you won't escape judgment. Everyone shall appear before the judgment seat and meet the Lord and answer for the works of this life. And they shall not escape, it says. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, saying Christians who are aware that the Lord could return at any time, you've taken his blood upon you, you're prepared. So you're not in darkness, so to speak, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You're prepared, just like you lock your doors and your windows before you go to bed at night. A Christian who is in Christ is prepared for his return and is not going to be caught off guard when it happens. So, to conclude this morning, I kind of like what uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 11 says, to be prepared, to be prepared at all times. It says, therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you shall never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So be diligent to make sure that if the Lord returns today, you're ready for his return today. And I guess the best question you can ask yourself is to honestly look at the condition of your soul and ask, are you prepared? And hopefully you can answer yes to that. So if we were meeting together this morning, I could ask you, are you prepared? And if you said, no, I'm not, or I don't know, then we could have the opportunity to work with you this very morning and to talk with you and pray with you and study with you. But even though that's not available, we still want to do anything we can to help you. So if you need more information, if you want to know how you prepare, um, if you would like to obey the gospel, um, you can contact me. Uh, my number is 859-585-7572, or you can send an email to Camargo, K-Y-C-O-C, at gmail.com, and we would love to help you uh, get prepared and nothing would please us more. So if you've liked our lesson today, uh, we invite you to like the video, to leave us a comment. Maybe you have a question that you'd like answered, leave it in the comments and we'll try to, to address it. Subscribe to our channel so you can be notified uh, when we release new videos. Follow us on Facebook so you can keep up with the latest information on our congregation. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found this lesson uplifting, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.